When it comes to web scraping with Python, it's hard to look past Scrapey. It's a full feature framework that's got everything thought of and in there that you could possibly need. And although I haven't been using it so much recently, whenever I come back to it, I remember just how good it is. In this video, we're going to be doing a crawl spider project. We're going to be crawling through pages and getting product details from Amazon. So this video is sponsored by IP Royals. So we are going to be using proxies in this Scrapey project too. More on that later. So let's get our project set up. I have my virtual environment ready to go and Scrapey pip installed. So let's get started. So I've got Fleet open here. This is the JetBrains IDE that uh, I think it's free at the moment to try out if you want to give it a go. Uh, and I have my virtual environment activated. So we're going to do Scrapey start project. And I'm going to call this one AMZ like this. This is going to create this. And I'm going to follow the exact instructions and then do Scrapey gen spider. And we'll call this one ASINS spider or ASIN spider. And it's amazon.co.uk. This is going to create all the boilerplate for us. You'll see we have a new folder over here with all of these files. And here is our standard spider. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to change this slightly because we're going to be using the crawl spider, not the general spider. So we're going to say uh, from, we're going to import in crawl spider and we also need rule. And then we also need to do from scrapey uh, dot link extractors, link extractors. There we go. Import the link extractor. There we go. So we're going to be creating rules for our spider, our crawl spider. So we're going to change this to here. That's going to basically follow links depending on what we say. But our starting link is going to be a search term in Amazon. So if you need to ever go for a search URL Amazon, it works like this, S uh, question mark K. And then I'm going to put in monitors just as a general search term like that. Uh, we'll leave it as monitor actually, there we go. So this is our start URL. So now we need to add in the rules. So I'm going to copy these over and I'm going to paste them in and we'll talk about them. So what I've got here is I have a tuple called rules and this will automatically execute for our, um, our scraper, our spiders when we run it. So let's look at the first one. So it's the link extractor rule, which is going to allow any link that has this text in it. So this is important because I only want to follow the pages and the product pages. So this is the um, the pagination, so each product link page, but we're going to find this in this selector here. So this is where restrict CSS comes in. This is really good because it means that we're searching within this CSS selector for this piece of text in a link. So we can really be specific about what links we do and do not want to follow. Then we're going to say that we're going to allow slash DP slash because all of the product pages, the individual detail product pages have this part in the URL. And when we do that, we're going to make a callback to a function called pass item. Now, when you use crawl spider, you need to change the default pass to pass something else. I call mine pass item because it's reserved, I think. So you just need to change it like this. So now we have the shell of our part, our spider created. We know which links we're going to and before we create our items and our uh, item pipeline, we're going to create a custom middleware for our proxies. So I've been using IP Royal, which is the sponsor of today's video for a while now, and I found them to be excellent. So if you wanted to do this a lot, follow along with me, there's a link in the description below and a discount code JWR50, which will give you 50% off your first Royal residential proxy order. Once you've created your account and placed your order, you'll be greeted with a page like this. So I've basically selected a random country and randomized IP. So what this means is that the system is going to rotate the IPs for you, which makes our lives really easy when it comes to actually implementing this into our code, our scrapey project in this case, or it could be anything else, whatever you're doing. You want HTTP and HTTPS proxies. And then the piece of information that we want is this one here. So I'm looking in the curl example and it's giving me a link here that will have your username and password in. So if you're looking for proxies for web scraping, I'd highly recommend the Royal Residential proxies. Those are the ones that my discount code JWR50 will work on. But you maybe you want something different. You've got different use cases use cases like the static residential proxies will work great for shopping and streaming services or data center proxies if you just need throughput and uh, nothing else you don't need the stealth so much let's go ahead and copy this now come back to our project go to our middlewares and scroll down we're going to create a new one at the bottom so i'm going to say class and we're going to call this ip royal proxy 
and I think this needs to be object like this. And then we're going to put in the def uh, our function for the process request. Now this has to be called this for Scrapey for it to work. Uh, and then we need to pass in self and also the request itself and the spider, I believe as well. From here, what we can do is we can say request dot meta or request dot meta. Yeah. And then proxy like this. And then this is going to be equal to that string there. That's all you need to do. That's it. This is now going to run every request that we make in this uh, Scrapey project through our IP Royal proxy here. If you, you can put this in other ways, you can decide which request you wanted to do. But I'm basically saying I want all of my requests now to go through this proxy. Let's go to our settings.py file and scroll down to the download, mid download and middlewares. Let's uncomment these and we can change this to our IP royal proxy after our project name their middlewares then our thing here i'm going to drop this down to 100 this basically number basically means that if you had multiple downloader middlewares this is the order that they run in so now that's saved when we come to run this spider it's all going to be routed through that proxy that we've just set up so let's go back then to the items because we want to talk about what information we're actually going to be getting so the items and the item loader is specifically designed for taking unstructured data, which is what we're taking off the website and structuring it so we can then use it and however we need to. This is particularly useful uh, rather than just doing something like this. You might see this quite a lot yield and just stick out a dictionary. This is OK. This works well. But if you really want to make something a bit better, you want to use the items and the item loader. Think of it a bit like if you've ever used Pydantic or data classes, it's doing the same sort of thing. It's structuring that data for us. So in our items.py file, we need to think about what information we're going to be getting. Well, probably let's say the name, so scrapey.field. And we're also going to be doing the ASIN, which is the product identifier, the price, uh, we're going to say discounted. This will show this is going to pull the information from whether the product is discounted or not. And then let's get the total review count as well. Total reviews. We can go one step further here. We can actually import in these other information here. This the item loaders and the remove tags from w3lib.html. What this means is that we can now have access to these things that we can work with the input and output processes. So the item loader is going to take the element, the data from the element on the page that we give it, and it's going to process it through this flow. So let's say our input processor is equal to, and this is where we're going to use map compose. So map compose just lets us basically run functions on this piece of, uh, on, on this element, on this text. So we're going to use remove tags. This is going to, I need these parentheses, remove all of the HTML tags from the field that we pass in. So when we go ahead and uh, fill in these selectors, the information is going to come from the page. It's going to flow into our spider. Our spider is then going to pass it via the item loader, which we're going to create in our spider file shortly. And it's going to put it into our actual class here for this item. This is like our pedantic base class model or our data class item. You can actually use data classes in Scrapey too. I'm just sticking to their default item. It's then going to run through this remove tags, which is going to take away the HTML tags from around it. And then we can have our output processor, which is going to be take first. This is the one that I use the most. Basically, it's going to take the first piece of information that it finds that matches that selector. It means we need to be a bit sharper on our selectors, but it also means that it's much easier, much less work for us to do. Now, this is good, but we need to do one more thing. We want to create our own function because we're going to need to clean the data a bit more. So I'm going to call this one uh, strip space. And we're going to say pass in the value. And then we're just going to return out uh, the value dot strip value dot strip and we're also going to replace the pound sign because this is in gbp with nothing so if you've ever used um, other uh, web scraping like with requests and beautiful soup there's a good chance you've put something similar to this on the end of your selectors or in your code somewhere all we're doing is we're being able to put it into our map compose so this function now will get run on this field every time. 
So I'm going to basically just copy this because I want to run it on all of these fields. All of, the, all of them the same. There might be some cases where you want to do different ones for each one, but you can then choose. So for example, if we had different uh, uh, criteria that we wanted to do on the price field, we could create our own function to do something there. Now we've done that, we can come back to our spider. Now we need to import in the item that we just created. So I'm going to do from dot dot items. This is just going back up the file tree to the items folder. You could also do the project name here if you wanted to. And we're going to import in our AMC item. Then we want to import in the item loader, which is going to take the information and load it into that item for us. It just makes it a bit easier and neater. So from scrapey dot loader, let's import in the item loader. So now we can get rid of this and we can just make our pass item function super neat and tidy. So I'm going to copy this over. So I'm not going to show you all of the CSS selectors that I did for this. If you want to learn about CSS selectors, I've got another video that will talk about them here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain what this code does and why you would want to use the item loader. So we're saying that our item loader instance is L. The item we're using is the one that we just created in our items.py file, this one and we're giving it the response. So what we're doing is we're adding one in. So we say, let's add it using CSS selectors into the name. So these, these match our item fields. So we're saying load it into this field of this item with this selector. Now, if you've used Scrapey before, you might think, well, we need to do text uh, and then dot get. Not with the item loader. It's going to basically pass all of the information that matches this element into our items here and then map compose remove tags strip spaces happens and take first so all of that has been now been moved over into here to make our code a bit easier to manage and maintain so we can see that i've done the same here although this one i am using the attribute here because i wanted to pull the attribute value data which is where the asin information is in this selector from here so you can still do this if you need to and then we have our others here and then we just yield out the loaded item okay so let's let's run this with scrapey crawl um, we'll do asin spider dash o to output to a file we'll call it monitors.json and let's run this and see if we got anything that we missed or anything that we did wrong you can see there's a deprecated deprecated warning there we're just going to ignore that for now okay so we can see that the information is coming through you can see that it has a bit more structure to it. So let's just scroll up and catch one. There we go. So you'll see that this is in JSON format, which is what we're expecting uh, because that's how we're outputting it. But it has structured it all nicely for us. You can see the information has come through, stripped, the tags have all been stripped to back down to the actual text, which is what we were after. We can see that the, the pound sign has been removed from the price and we've got all the information there. So let's check out our JSON file. Uh, we've got one that failed there. We got some good information in here. So I'm just going to let this run and finish and we should pick up a load more information. Uh, you'll see it's still popping up through. So I think there's probably about 400 or so results, I think, from my initial looks. So I'm just going to let this go through and finish, and then we'll check out the final results. So it has finished, and we got 322 results there. Let me scroll down. There we go. So we've got them all. Now, I think this has all worked pretty well. I did see some here, like look at this one. This one hasn't quite worked properly. You can see there's some different information in the price. And that is because the selector for the price isn't quite good enough. So this one here needs to be updated just to make sure that we are capturing the right information. So this has run all through our proxy that we put in into our uh, middleware, our custom IP Royal middleware that we created. Now, a good use case for proxies isn't only to avoid being banned, but if you wanted to host a scraper like this one on a VPS, a virtual private server in the cloud, what you'll find is that you might it will work on your computer, that old thing. It works on my machine, but it won't work there. And that's because when you run it at home, you are running it through a residential IP. But when you run it on the cloud, it's running through a Res uh, data center IP, which may be blocked more often by websites. So that is another good use case for proxies that you may not think about. So once again, I thank you to IP Royal for sponsoring this video. Uh, again, my link is in the description below with my custom code, which you can get 50% off your first Royal Residential proxy order, which is what I used just here. 
If you've enjoyed this video, but maybe you want a bit more of a gentle introduction to Scrapey, then you want to see this one right here, which does just that.